Um, so for macros, why you would want to use macros to help you achieve your performance, body composition, health goal. Um, for one, the first and primary reason, I believe, is that it provides you with awareness of what you're eating, right? So um, going back to that finance m uh, metaphor, like if you are trying to save money and you make a goal, but you don't keep track of your finances, how much you know how much you're spending, how much you know how much you're making, right? So when you first start to count your macros or track your macros, this is really just the process of becoming aware of how you've been eating currently, yes. right? So. Because you can be like, I'm hungry all the time, and then you track your macros, and you're eating too low of protein, too high of carbs. So yeah. even if the calories aren't off, you can change your hunger, your satiety, by balancing out your macronutrients. Just adjusting the ratio. So even if, like you said, you hate to track shit, track for a week or two just to become aware and see where you're at. Because tracking macros can help you understand how you currently eat to make change to optimize your diet. Right. If your goal is fat loss or muscle building, and your protein is low, that's gonna be kind of a problem. Not the be all end all of things, but it's definitely an important factor, right? And back bitches the bridge bridge podcast i'm sean nixon john matthew we're going over macronutrients today sean macros baby talk to me about macronutrients what are macronutrients you say well let's break it down for them some people say it's the most important thing i don't think so but it is an important thing so it's worth talking about yeah i think so some people only track macros and not calories, which is kind of fucking weird to me. But if it works for you, do your thing. And if you've never heard of macronutrients, um, total calories are the amount of energy you would either eat or expend, depending on what context you're talking about, in a day, week, month, cycle, period, whatever. Um, so we're breaking those down into macronutrients. So which basically the components of calories, right? The components right? of calories, components the different of energy. types of calories. Calories equal energy, so yep. different forms of energy. Proteins, carbs, and fats. But most people don't talk about the fourth macronutrient, which is alcohol. Ooh. Uh, well, a lot of people talk about alcohol. I don't know what you're talking about. But they don't <laughs> think... That's a macronutrient. talk about alcohol and they drink alcohol, they have but calories. they don't think... It has energy. Um, so yeah. So speaking of energy, one gram of protein equals four calories. One gram of fat equals nine calories, approximately. One gram of carbohydrates equals four calories. One gram of alcohol is about seven calories. And the thing about alcohol is it takes priority in the body because it's literally poison. So your liver has to detox alcohol before it's going to build muscle or burn fat. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're shoveling sugar and junk food along with your alcohol. Yeah, because it can lead to malabsorption and lots of other things. So so once again, we don't believe Drink responsibly. In, yeah, <laughs> any food or drug or drink as the problem. It's dose, dosage, set and setting type of thing. And I, I think the same way with food and macronutrients. I do like... I've talked about a, like a seesaw metaphor of protein being high and then carbs and fats being on the other ends of the seesaw. So if carbs are high, fats are low. And if fats are high, carbs are low yeah. type of situation because protein can basically never be stored as fat. Um, but carbs and fats are your energy sources. So if they're both high, then you're screwed. And that's why foods be people consider fattening have low protein, high carbs, and high fat. Cookie, pizza, ice cream, whatever. Yeah. Um, not that those can't fit into a proper macronutrient ratio, but in and of themselves, they're junk food or standard American diet, yeah. low protein, high sugar, high fat. Um, and I love protein so much, specifically if you're dieting or trying to lose weight, because of the thermic effect of food. When you eat protein, you know, the protein itself one gram is four calories, but when you eat it, it's got to digest 
and break down into amino acids. So then it comes out to about three, 3.2 calories. So every 100 calories worth of protein you eat, you're only digesting and utilizing about 75. So not only is the most satiating per gram, but it's gonna di- you know, have the highest thermic effect of food yeah. and digest the cost your body the most calories to digest. Um, so when I'm cutting, I like high protein. I like high protein in general, but each of these macronutrients is going to be different for different people at different times for different goals. Yeah, absolutely. So why would you give a shit about macronutrients, right? Um, Because I know a lot of people I've worked with, pretty much every person I've worked with, doesn't like counting calories and like tracking things. Um, It's like I said last time, if you're going to have a goal, like a financial goal, but you don't keep track of your finances, that's going to lead to a bad time. So if you have a, a food goal or a health goal, why would you not keep track of the things they're going to help you get there because whatever axiom you've heard, like it's 70% diet, 10%, diet, whatever it is, it's a lot of diet. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that, right? Because basically what make a case for 100%. Diet. Yeah, exactly, right? Because when you're in the gym, because I, I still there's a lot of people who don't really understand this, but you're not really building muscle in the gym. Right? No, exercise burns so little calories. It breaks too, down well. your body. You're breaking down your muscle. Oh, yeah. And you're creating a stimulus response. Stimulus. That's and then it. the food is what recovery, like you said, recovery, rest. Uh, passive, active, and then diet, obviously the energy in, right? That's that's the clay that's shaping whatever it is you're trying to make right there. Um, and so the, if it fits your macros movement, you know, let's talk about that. You know, cause that's a, that was a big movement that maybe started, I want to say like six, seven years ago now? I was going to say at least 10. I yeah. remember bodybuilding.com forums before social yeah. media. 2000. It was, it was nine, when I was 10. in high school. So yeah, that was probably the right 2010. In the yeah. beginning. Um, so basically what that means is you would just have a macronutrient goal and disregard food quality and eat whatever you want ice cream mcdonald's snickers whatever as long so long as it fits your macro ratio and if you hit your goals then that will change body composition i think the to prove two things one that calories are the only thing that matters as far as body composition losing weight and gaining weight not health or performance and inflammation that's different um, and two, that now it's called more flexible dieting, where you can eat a base of healthy foods, and if you have a few carbs left, that can be from junkier, fun, sugary sources. I personally don't eat like that, but obviously it works for short periods of time and for body composition. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it can be a great way to, if you want a piece of candy, but you don't want to lose your mind psychologically, yeah. you just fit it into your macros. Yeah, if you're still kind of lost on the whole macro nutrient thing, basically, if you look at, like, you pick a bowl, like, any kind of food product, or you look at the nutrition label, you're going to get the big number at the top is usually your calories, and that's the energy we talked about. And you'll usually see a couple different numbers, um, starting with fats, and then carbohydrates, and then proteins usually last. Yeah, so you'll see right. protein first, and assuming it's a complete protein, we don't have to break that down. Yeah. Then you'll see fat, which is broken down into saturated fat and trans fat. Yep. Um, trans fat's always going to be bad. Always bad. Saturated fat's usually going to be good depending on the source, but we'll have a whole episode on fats. Yeah. And then carbohydrates is going to be broken down into total, uh, total carbohydrates, but then fiber. Fiber. Yeah. Right? So insoluble fiber, you don't digest, therefore it passes through you, therefore you can subtract fiber from total calories from total carbohydrates to get net carbohydrates. Yeah, so if you're picking up your whole grain bread and you notice it has four grams of fiber out of the 25 grams of carbs, it really only has 21 grams of digestible energy, usable energy in terms of carbohydrates. Um, So macronutrient ratio, we were throwing that around. So the ratio really is what we're saying is the ratio of protein to carbs to fats, right? And you'll see a bunch of different, if you look at macronutrients or if it fits your macros right now, you'll see Tons of different percentages because people like to get really data driven with this stuff because it's really, um, for some people, like I, we have the pie charts here, very visual if you like that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, but the ratio for, you know, what's, what, is it, what is your goal, right? Um, like you said, it's going to be dose dependent, situationally dependent, time of the year, dependent, like a lot of different factors yeah. going in there. There's no set ratio for everybody. There's no set ratio for every person. Because different goals at different time periods. I switch my macronutrient macronutrient ratios around all the time the same way that I fluctuate my food choices the same way that I fluctuate my total calories so there are three different like ways to make change within it yeah layers of yeah um, so for macros why you would want to use macros to help you achieve your performance body composition health goal 
Um, for one, the first and primary reason, I believe, is that it provides you with awareness of what you're eating, right? So um, going back to that finance m uh, metaphor, like if you are trying to save money and you make a goal, but you don't keep track of your finances, how much you know how much you're spending, how much you mo know how much you're making, right? So when you first start to count your macros or track your macros, this is really just the process of becoming aware of how you've been eating currently, yes. right? So, because you can be like, I'm hungry all the time, and then you track your macros, and you're eating too low of protein, too high of carbs. So yeah. even if the calories aren't off, you can change your hunger, your satiety, by balancing out your macronutrients. Just in the ratio. So even if, like you said, you hate to track shit, track for a week or two just to become aware and see where you're at, because tracking macros can help you understand how you currently eat to make change to optimize your diet. Right, if your goal is fat loss or muscle building, and your protein is low, that's going to be kind of a problem. Not the be all end all of things, but it's definitely an important factor, right? And vice versa, if you're, um, you know, have insulin issues, or if you have, uh, you know, your body has a particular sensitivity to fats, and you find out you've been eating tons of fats or tons of insulin or tons of carbohydrates, rather, that's also going to play a factor too, right? So. And all these types of diets work within these macronutrient ratios. So whether you're fucking paleo, vegan, vegetarian, South whatever. Beach. Yeah, Atkins. all that shit. Mediter Mediterranean diet. Yeah. Like that's more of just a style, which is fine. Um, but either way, total calories and macronutrients are going to matter within whatever style of food choices that you eat. Yeah. So there's, uh, I mean, there's different ways to calculate your macronutrients. I always calculate the calories first. Remember we were talking about this? I go total calories first, and then as a starting baseline, one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day, pretty much the same in carbs and pretty much half of that number in fats, and you almost have a 33, 33, 33 balance. Yeah. Um, which would be a balanced diet of all like equal macronutrients. Equal carbs, ratios. equals. And so just to remind you again, carbs and proteins are about four, proteins are a little bit less, about four gram or four um, calories. Calories per gram. Yeah. And the fats are about nine. So if everything's balanced, you're going to be eating significantly less fat, right? Just to give, I mean, it makes sense, but just so you can, you know in your head that the number of carbs and proteins is naturally going to be higher than the number of fat um, if you're eating a balanced to diet. To balance the ratio, exactly. exactly. So then there's a high fat diet, which would basically mean low to no carbohydrates. Yeah, so um, keto is the extreme. There's like complete... Uh, like carnivores also in this, you know, realm too. But there's also just low carb too as well. It's I personally hate low carb or I like keto or I want enough carbs. You don't like that little... I don't you know, like carbs. the mid-ground unless you're doing refeeds every couple of days and then okay. you're getting to more an advanced level. Got yeah, it's... Um, because ketosis, you're running off of fats and ketones. But you don't find any benefit really to the carbohydrates. Low carb... But low carb, once you run out of the, that energy, you get sluggish and you get all fucked up. Because it's, yeah, because you have to switch back over. And by the time you do, you're already in carb. That's just me personally, yeah. playing around with every type of diet, every type of total calories, and every type of macronutrient ratio. Yeah, so that's a high fat. So again, fats, we'll go in a whole, we'll do a whole section on each one of these protein, fats, carbs. Maybe a whole section about alcohol too, maybe. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, but can we just say fat? Adipose tissue, body fat, and dietary fat are two different just, fucking things. I was just things. about to say, yeah, because when people think fat, they think I'm fat, or they think I'm eating fat, so I'm eating the thing that's in. Which the hilarious part is it's quite the opposite. If you're eating healthy fats in a proper ratio with proper total calories, that can really help you lose fat. Exactly, yeah. So, so body fat and dietary fat are not the same fucking thing. Yeah, I mean, body fat, it's easier to think, you said earlier, it's pretty much stored energies to think of it like that rather than the word fat because... Fats are not unhealthy. They're actually very healthy. Certain types. Certain types, yeah. Not true. And fats do not make you fat. Only excess calories or a caloric surplus can make you fat. Yes. So, like, calories, basically that's the, the main thing there is calories in, calories out, right, for... Manipulating body composition. For body composition. For body composition. That can right? be the whole thing. That can be all of that, essentially, yeah. Um, Health and performance are going to come into food choices and inflammation, but for losing weight or gaining weight, you yeah. got to know your calories and your macros, and that's about it. Yeah, and then... Um, Timing and supplements come in down the road. After that, yeah, once you get that locked in. Then we have, like, 
I put in quotes muscle building because this is typically what you'll see as the like yeah, basic template for trying like to... a bodybuilding diet. Bodybuilding diet, right? And it's like a... Lower fat, higher carb. Yeah, 40, 40, 20, 50, 30, 20 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, some type um, of... So majority of uh, calories coming from carbs and or, fat or protein with fat being minimal. Um, and the reason for that is carbs. Well, yeah, point being is you could have the same amount of calories in balanced high fat or low fat. Um, the lower fat is just going to help you get in more carbohydrates to push up insulin to grow muscle. Yeah. So that's, what, that's the reason why you would want, perhaps want higher carbohydrates if you're trying to put on muscle. Because for a skinny guy or girl that wants to get their weight up, I wouldn't eat too, too much protein because that'll fill you up. And I wouldn't eat yeah. too, too much fat because it'll fill you up. The same way that if you are heavy and you're trying to lose weight, you do want a lot of, a lot enough healthy appropriate fats, amount of, appropriate amount of protein as well to be satiated so you can hit your goals without being too hungry. So if you're skinny, you want to pump the carbs up as much as you can and not get filled up on fats and proteins. So once again, so you can hit your total calorie goals. Yeah. So it's just different ways to cut it. Like I said, for different goals, different people, different times of year. Yeah, you can literally slice the pie any which way you want, but worst way to slice the pie is makes you sad because sad is an acronym for a standard American diet, which would be low protein, high fat, high carb. Think pizza. Pizza, cookies, ice cream, bad fats, unhealthy fats, and sugar together with <laughs> low protein. Making up the majority of what you're eating. Making up the majority of what you're eating. So if you're doing that, it's going to make Because not only does that make you sad, but then since those become junk foods, then you're not hitting enough micronutrients. Yeah, so macronutrients, the reason they're called mac, I mean micro, macro, macro, or just there's only three of them. They're the big blocks of energy producing nutrients. Micronutrients are what you would think of, well, what, what are your minerals? Vitamins, vitamins, minerals, electrolytes, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, if you're eating healthy whole food sources, you should automatically hit your micros and not have to track that. Yeah. But supplementation comes in if you want to just do, if it fits your macros, eat anything you want, cookies, Twinkies, McDonald's, whatever. If it fits your macros. Yeah, and pipe it into a macronutrient ratio for long-term health, then you'll have to take a look yeah. at your micros. What's too. funny is like all those like dirty bulking or dirty eat, my, um, if it fits your macros guys, like there's not, even if you do, Fit all that junk food in. There's still not a lot of wiggle room. If I eat a Whopper, I've already like maxed out like a ton Doesn't of stuff. Doesn't make sense. Ton to of me. stuff. So like, what's uh, the benefit works, of that? It works, and I'm not hating it. <laughs> I think the benefit is psychological, where you don't feel it's trapped def into whatever. Yeah. You can you can eat you know three quarters healthy. Yeah. And then instead of going off the rails with a cheat meal, you do the math to fit in the Whopper into your macro. Yeah, I mean, I, when I'm first working with a client. For who is trying to, well, for one who's building muscle too, but um, specifically those for trying to lose body fat, is uh, I, I prefer to have them go a little bit stricter for that first time frame of they're doing it because Absolutely. It's, it's not about having flexibility at that point. It's about erasing an old pattern of behavior and Love creating it. a new one. So if you just keep trickling back that and back in that old pattern, it's going to create a trigger and all of a sudden you're back to just doing all the same things you did before. So and that's discipline, really, is just to say no to the things that you crave or you know that you desire. Think you want, yeah, that you used to want, that you know aren't bad for you. At this and point. now you have to let go of those old bad habits to create new habits. Exactly. So part of that, even if you never want to track food again, the first week or two is kind of important. To see definitely, where you're at. definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, and again, this like the one answer me and you both give to people who ask us a lot of questions is it depends. That's the, like the, the that's why we need the podcast because when people ask certain questions, the answer is all, training, nutrition, no what. spirituality, mental stuff, emotional stuff. The answer is always it depends. It depends. We should get sponsored by depends, like the adult diapers. There you go. Kind of Joe sick. Biden's got a fucking sponsorship <laughs> for depends. Um, <laughs> But that's the answer is always, it depends on different factors. What are your goals? Who are you? Blah, 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 blah. And you could never have a blanket statement. Um, yeah. Because for macros, you may find, you may tr you may hear your one friend say that like super high fat low or keto is like all the rage and you try it and you're like, well, I'm not really feeling it. Like I just kind of felt like shit for a couple of weeks and nothing has really changed. I've stuck with everything. And that could be your body's very different than your friend's body, but your friend had their singular experiences projecting their experience onto everybody, which is what happens with all diets, which is why they get into these diet wars. It's like, my diet's better because it worked for me. Well, you're not him, so why are you telling him how he should eat? It's crazy. 
and there's like a lot of factors again genetics gut bacteria yep. um you know just uh and a lot of the zealots that say carnivore is the best or veganism is the best i think are just getting the honeymoon period of rebounding off of stop eating junk food yeah, so it feels good and works in the beginning because of what you're cutting out. Not that meat is magical, not that vegetables are magical, not that vegetables are the devil, not that meat is the devil. The devil is processed foods and fucking bullshit yeah. that if you eat a minimal amount, you can get away with, but it's never healthy. Yeah, because most people pick up a diet, right, or I'm starting the keto diet, you're automatically, if you're starting some sort of program, you're gonna be strict with yourself no matter what. So you're obviously gonna default to things, you're doing things already with the, where else the diet that you wouldn't do normally so yep. that in and of itself is going to make you experience change but some people like restrictions because it keeps them on track you know yeah I mean? and that's like, again that depends on you as a person depends on you as does a person. that work for you vegetarianism it's like okay i'm just not going to eat meat and go from there yeah. or keto i'm just not going to eat carbs just cut out completely it's like going cold turkey right rather, yeah. rather than trying to moderate if moderation is too difficult for you then it, it definitely can be depending on where you're at with your uh, like mentally, emotionally, and psychologically with your eating That's habits. what I used keto for in the beginning, just to cut out... Stop the carbs, yeah. Just to stop fucking sugar cravings. Yeah. Because A, mentally, you can't have it. And then B, once you go three to seven days without it, you don't even want it anymore. Yeah, so your it body improves adjusts insulin pretty sensitivity. quickly. Sensitivity. Um, I like it. Cold turkey is a good keto snack, by the way. Some cheese. Yeah. Some avocado. Mm. Next thing you know, it's a keto <laughs> snack. Bada boom, bada bing. Um... So macros are important, but we went over on the nutrition preview show that they're not the most important as far as a hierarchy of things. I would always say that total calories and food choices, food quality and quantity are more important than the ratio of macronutrients, but it is important and worth talking yeah. about. Uh, so like, uh, just maybe go over some questions we get from, I, I get, maybe you get, and I have one for you and you kind of brought this up at the very, very beginning. So say someone goes on a, is trying to lose body fat, goes on a low carb diet. How long would you give them, not low carb, but maybe a keto or some sort of, okay. they're dropping their carbs or maybe eliminating the carbs they were eating. Okay. Um, that's just an example, not specifically mm -hmm. for a diet, but how long would you give someone to try a diet or try a way of eating or try a ratio before- Before we switch stuff up. Exactly, adjusting. Um, so It depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. So if they're super brand new, I just go, Eat whatever the fuck you've been eating, not what you think you should or you think I should or yeah. what's good. Continue what you're doing and just write everything down or track it for two weeks. And then we go from there where I'll see if their ratios are way off. Like I said, if it's low protein and high carb, I'll make a little adjustment. Um, or to see if their total calories are way off. And then after that first adjustment, to make to answer your question... I don't adjust less than two weeks, but I also don't like adjusting more than four weeks. So two to four weeks. Gotcha, gotcha. So, cause at that point you can throw in a cheat meal or a refeed or a high carb or whatever you want to call it, and then make adjustments on not only total calories, but macronutrients at that point. So two to four weeks to answer your question. I think it takes two weeks for the body to at least catch up to something. But after a month, you're going to need a little mini break, even if it's a weekend or one yeah. day or one meal or something like that. So yeah. people cheat too often or not enough. I think the answer is two to four weeks. And uh, a cheat meal and an adjustment. Yeah, so that's another thing to bring up too. Cheat meals for people, right? Especially as we're now nearing like the holiday season, right? Like if you're still trying to stay on track with your stuff. Great point. Macronutrients can really be beneficial if you just even know what you're supposed to get and have a basic knowledge of how to just gauge calories. Well, now you now for one, now you're not in this position where like, oh, I don't know, I'm just gonna eat whatever and get back onto layers. You know, I know my macros, I can fit all this stuff in, still be able to have my diet and still hit my my numbers. I love that. I think that's how you were able to seamlessly bridge it to mental and emotional stuff from the physical, um, because that's why we work out so that when holidays and events and stuff happens, you can fucking eat and not worry about it. So there's two ways to do it. Like yeah. you said, eat normal and light that day, knowing you're gonna have a big family holiday meal and then eyeball your portions. Therefore, your macros are, and your health is still there, but your total calories just might be a little higher, which is a yeah. good thing, because you're refeeding your muscle and liver glycogen at yeah. that point, let alone 
not being under stress mentally, which is going to just further hinder you. And give you guilt for eating the stuff you did. And you're like, oh, I fell off my thing, my wagon. And, you or know. you eat lighter the day before and the morning of and get back on track the day after and you just go hog wild that night. Yeah. And once again, don't hold on to any guilt or resentment. Yeah, and the, the big thing that what's happening there is really just awareness, right? And the awareness yes. came from tracking it Because the, the first worst place. thing you can do is track or not track, but fucking... Guilt. Hold yourself back and have an anxiety attack, and exactly. then hold on to guilt for three fucking days. After. Then that's going to do that more damage to your health than right. food, <laughs> mental and physical. Now yeah. you're going backwards. Exactly. So the point is to be aware of it, so you can plan out to eyeball your macros and make smart choices, or like I said, just eat whatever the fuck you want on Thanksgiving, for example, and then get back on your shit the next yeah, day. Yeah, you said this the last episode. Like, uh, what's that famous? Um, if you. Uh, uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? So it's the same thing. Always plan ahead. All tracking macros is, is really just planning ahead, essentially, right? Like I, I know what I have to do, or I know where the ranges I am, depending yep. on how strict you want to be, and that's a personal thing. Um, like I've been hyper strict with mine before, and it's again, I've done it for a consistent amount of time, but again, it wasn't mentally sustainably for me, so now I have a range, and I'm happier because I can accept the range and I also trust myself now that I've done it before to know that I'm not going to cheat myself or you know cut myself off if I have something like a sweet or a dessert or you know some make something right um, not that it happens very often but if it does like my mom made some cornbread the other day that, was, that shit was dope love cornbread and eat that <laughs> fats are not bad carbs are not bad it's all just that. only people are bad only people <laughs> Only, they're only bad actions, as Ram does. Yeah, that's no, say. that's true. If, yeah. you, if you think about an action being evil and a person not being evil, yeah. that helps you Just ignorant. Yeah. let go of some anger right there. That's a good little tip. Yeah. Uh, a third way of tracking. You and I like to track total calories, and then we fit within a macronutrient ratio. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about a lot of people that hit their macros, and then it kind of falls into a total calorie thing. A third way, and it's usually for like young guys bulking is I just hit my protein, bro, and then I just protein, yeah. and then I just eat whatever the fuck I want. So if you're trying to dirty bulk and you don't care about high fat, high carb. I feel like I've done that before. Yeah, where you just want to make school. sure you're getting in, yeah. in enough protein. That's why I said it's usually young guys. Yeah. Like once I hit my protein, I just eat whatever I want <laughs> after that. Which is another style of intuitive eating because at one point you must have track to know that you hit your protein. Exactly. Right? Or just so it's just an easier way of tracking. And the way to calculate your calories or your macros or either or, how do you do that? I mean, there's different calculators online you can use, different equations. We don't have to go into the details of the equations necessarily right now, but is yeah, there a like I said, method I, you have? I like, yeah, I would just start with the most general way without any calculators is one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. That same number in carbs and then half of that number in fats and that should be some then if you do that for two weeks you see where the scale goes yeah step on the scale once eat like that for two weeks with no deviations no cheats no nothing step back on the scale if it stayed the same you found your maintenance it's level. a side note about the scale too there's a variable range on most people's scales like my scale i bought has like a five pound if i put it in different parts of the house it's got a five pound difference Scales are not calibrated. Plus, the scale only shows your relationship with gravity and pounds. Exactly. It's not mass. And since 70% approximately of your body is water, every time you step on the scale, there could be a 70% fluctuation. Approximately. Well, if there is 70% fluctuation, you're one of the fluctuations is you might be dead. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, yeah. So, don't... So, um, take the scale with a fucking grain of salt. And yeah. I personally don't even like the scale whatsoever. But that's one way, if you're for, eating the if same you're gonna use way, it. if you're going to use it, to just see if it didn't move, that's same your time, maintenance Same level. part time of day. Oh, always same time of day, I same I like empty scale. stomach. Yeah. yeah. Oh, best way to weigh yourself, yeah, is to get up and First pee and morning. step on the scale. Bada -bada -bada -bada. Write the number down. Write the number down and fucking forget about it. Yeah. Right, and then I wouldn't weigh myself again for at least seven days just to let the body fucking yeah. make some. And some people change. like my body doesn't fluctuate very much, but I know people who fluctuate, oh, seven, fluctuate. seven pounds. Yeah, me, me you, too. You, yeah, big yes, time. Yeah, yeah, within a day. I'm yeah. within one two pounds always. So well, right, but still one to two. Yeah, just like, I can be within five at least just from food and water throughout the day. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't cry about it. Yeah, I got plenty of other things to cry about. Just a number. <laughs> it is just a number. Um. But the point is, if you eat with no deviation in that same ratio or total calories for about two weeks, and the scale didn't move at all, or within one to two pounds, you know you found your maintenance level, and you can add or subtract from there, depending on your goals. If it went down, you know you're in a 
deficit of calories, and if it went up, you know you're in a surplus of calories. So either way, it's just about awareness, not tracking forever and being a slave to numbers and scales and apps. Yeah. Because then from there, I mean, how long does it take you to, uh, if you're in a fucking uh, bodybuilding prep or something, or to make a weight for a, um, a sport, for, yeah. you're going to have to fucking track and weigh and measure and have a food scale and the whole thing. But if not, I mean, you only really need to track a couple of weeks to be able to eyeball shit it's and not then that eat hard intuitively get, after that. Because yeah. once you see, oh, this much protein looks like this, and this much is this, and then you just read some labels here and there. Yeah. Like I just know off the top of my head most of the macros for a serving Basic of peanut butter, stuff. couple bread, of bread, right, right. chicken breast, yeah. you know. The basics. Yeah, and then most things, I mean, the way cal- magnets are calculated isn't even really an exact thing. No. Um, Basically, what most of them do, I believe, is, is bomb calorimetry. They essentially... Uh, they put in a big oven. Yeah, and they just, just see how much energy... Burn the shit out of it yeah. and how much kilocalories it took to burn that yeah. shit. Because it is a similar type of burning process to heating up in, in the digestion. Yeah. So it's similar, but it's totally not accurate. Yeah. So and it's, it's... We call it calories, but it's kilocalories, kilocalories which, is, yeah. which is a whole nother fucking thing. So yeah. it's so approximate. So going nuts on how many calories you burned or how many steps you took. Yeah, the step thing, like you could do this. Holy that, that's the step moly. right there. If you took 10,000 steps. Get a shake weight, you're, you're walking a mile. And shake weight for 10 minutes. And then your mile. workout burned 250 calories. But like, what does that matter if you don't know what you Or ate? that, like the, I hate this one at the gym, the curved treadmill burns like 800 calories on people. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but who gives a fuck? Well, because it, then it'll throw your calories off, though, if it does, right? So th- I think that's a great point, yeah. is you do not adjust <laughs> for steps taken or calories burned. Yeah. Don't even adjust for fucking any workouts. Don't worry Just about hit that your yet. workouts don't worry about that yet. <laughs> and hit your calories. Yeah. Don't even worry about any adjustments. Because you will not be able to accurately. It's not accurate yeah. whatsoever. And you're only you're burning such a small amount. The amount you're burning throughout the day, the biggest percentage is your basal metabolic rate, just keeping you alive right in, in, yeah. from sleep, right? Just your organs Then working. your the next biggest chunk percentage-wise would be your neat, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So moving around all day and what you're doing, but not calling it exercise. Yeah. And then the next chunk would be TEF, the thermic effect of food. food. So your digestion. Then it would be your food. Yeah. So like counting steps and how much exercise, or then it would be your exercise. exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucked that all up. That's so, right. <laughs> but so so the two hundred calories that you burn running two miles or whatever the fuck is nothing compared to being active, eating a nice balanced diet, yeah. and sleeping properly. And the reason why that's is, what I was trying to say. is if you burn two hundred calories in that workout, but then you go and have. You know, like a, that's why I'm always saying it's a, when people are like 80% diet, 60% eat, like, diet, it's 100% you diet. You can eat three brownies and that's done. And it's done and, and you just took two steps The workout never happened. Yeah, the yeah. workout never even fucking happened. Yeah. So it's like, but, or you could sit at home, not work out at all, and calculate meticulously and you will lose or gain weight depending on yeah, whether you're in a Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people def- def- see it change without having to, people who've never exercised before and just do diet. If you were super obese, I would recommend just going for a walk and then trying to slowly clean up your diet first yeah. without tracking or lifting or running anything. Yeah. And then I would say get into lifting weights and then tracking macros and then cardio and supplements. Because if, yeah, if you're obese. Way down the line. If, if you're oh, really overweight or obese and you know it's mostly from food, then just doing that couple changes is going to make you see a significant change already. Like I've worked with people who've lost like 40 pounds just doing light exercise and just changing diet in a couple months. And they were over obese, so they have that way to lose, right? That's different. In the beginning, yeah. But you you can't use all your fucking ace cards in the no, beginning of the game. Keep that keep that in the hand. If you start fucking running ten miles a day, doing and you have lifting, right? And then trying to where are you going to go when you get to the stubborn fat and when your metabolism and it's just going to be mentally down. and physically and emotionally unsustainable. So sustainability, mental health, emotional health. So that could be a whole nother episode where we do like. Um, emotional relationship to food type of thing. That's a big one. Because this could be the physical nutrition episode. Yeah. And then we have like a mental emotional um, episode because so many people are demonizing foods or tied to foods or replace food with, you know, their mommy never loved them, but peanut butter loved them. Maybe yeah. that's just me, you peanut know? loves me, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, so. well, you know. Pizza never beat me like my daddy beat me, but well, pizza was always delicious. <laughs> there so you, There you go. You know, that could be some mental thing that you got going on. 
been there. Um, but as a physical thing, hit your total calories, hit your macros, brush your teeth, say your prayers, eat your vitamins. There we go. Love you yourself. Want to take us out with that last guy? Yeah, man. Tracking macros can help you understand how you currently eat and how to make the changes to optimize your diet. You can't make change if you don't know where the fuck you're at. So first step of anything, physical, right. mental, spiritual. Emotional. Emotional. <laughs> awareness. Awareness. Then change. Then coming back to awareness. So letting go of old bullshit to make change going forward. But how do you know what to let go of and what to make change to press forward on? Awareness. First step of anything is awareness. Yeah. So be aware of your macros. Be aware of your calories. And uh, once you do that, if you haven't done that, you'll, you'll probably see some good change. Love it. Boom. Adios. Peace.